Emma Finnecane is the first British women cycling sprint world champion in a decade and the first ever British women sprint European champion. As Paris beckons, the 21-year-old is gearing up for a golden Olympic debut. They do now. They know who you are now. Um, you're, you're a great hope. Yeah, physically, you can be in the best shape possible. But if you get on the start line you're, and you freak out, you don't know what to do. That's where it becomes, you can lose a race doing that. So you need to have both. We always say um, happy head, fast legs. That's like the trick. You almost need to like use the nerves in a good way to get the best out of you. I don't even know how to describe it. It's going to be mental. And I can't wait to live it. Emma, I want to start off by asking you, um, what does it feel like to be you right now? You sort of can't stop winning. I want, to, I want to know what that feeling feels like for somebody and somebody as young as you are as well. Yeah, it's definitely been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, this past two years of my career, it's kind of just suddenly just got better and better as I race. And I feel like I've changed a lot as a person. I've learned a lot on and off the bike. Um, yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster, like a lot of like mind games and lots of like physical performances but definitely yeah it's been a lot but it's also really exciting and I am only 21 and coming into an Olympic year with such an amazing team around me is really really exciting but it's definitely not been an easy journey and like yeah I'm excited to unpick that with you and see what it's like being an athlete because everyone sees when you go to the Olympics like this shiny version of you but the team behind the team like what you go through every day is yeah it's it's a lot but at the moment, I'm really enjoying it. And I think that that's why I'm doing so well in races be because I'm enjoying the process and I'm enjoying the journey and learning a lot as well. Like I still got so much to learn in my career. So what's changed? What's different between then and then the last couple of years where like you say in your words, it's sort of exploded a little. I mean, what has happened in that period of time, which you think, I mean, I know you say you're enjoying the training, but what, what does that actually look like? And what does that mean? And why, why has it led you to sort of feel, you know, empowered to the point where you're, you're, you know, you're out there and you're, you're, you're fierce. You're really fierce. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think so. Along, like I got picked up by the GB program when I was 18 and moved up to Manchester. And then you get, you get optimal performances, like performance and training because you're there, you're in the center every day, you're doing gym and track. And I think for me, so Carly McCulloch was, she became a GB coach about a year and a half ago and she believed in me. And I think I needed someone to believe in me. And like the structure she put for the GB women was amazing. Like we had structure, we had someone who believed in us, we had yeah, we had that around us and the support around us and we really used that. And I think that's how I went on leaps and bounds. I stuck to the structure. I believed in my training program, uh, my nutrition. I ate a lot of protein. I got gained muscle, um, which is really important for track sprinting. Um, and that's kind of like the rhythm we, f rhythm we flew with. Like we kind of just, yeah, I had my little phases. Um, I stuck through them. She taught me a lot in racing, which I kind of thrived on like we had our processes which which we'll delve into because for me the process and the mental side is 50% of it for sprint like 50% yeah you need to be physically ready but if you're mentally not ready then that's when you can crack and for me I learned that pretty quickly like at Worlds last year it got really intense and I got really emotional and I had to go up and race so yeah there's been a lot of like a few little things and I've had recently people asking me like how did it happen and I don't actually know how it happened I think I was taught, like my coach came along in the right time of my career at 20. She taught me so much and I kind of just grasped onto that really quickly. And my body just was like, yeah, let's thriving. And I was like, yeah, let's go. But um, yeah, the mental side for me was definitely, I think this year especially was really important for me. And I think in the, at the Olympics, I'll take so much from the mental side of it as well. Yeah, because you mentioned the fact that it's not always been an easy journey and you've talked previously about how you've been sort of, you know, there were times when you were crying in a loo, uh, you know, ahead of ahead of competition. And it was, you know, but yeah. what, what does that what does that feel like? Because you've obviously got to go on a on a big old journey in order to, you know, become mentally tough enough to cope with uh, the rigors at the top of your trade. So how, how do you sort of train yourself to get stronger mentally? Yeah, I think it's like anyone in a job, like some people need to have mental resilience for like how they do a task or like doing a task on time. And for us, it's like performing in front of thousands of people like on your bike. 
Um, and I guess that's day to day, like everyone has their challenges. And for me, I definitely learn mine through racing. Um, you're at your, like you're in front of a crowd, like at Worlds last year, I was a home crowd in Glasgow and I'd, I'd never raced at that level. Like I'd done, we did Paris Worlds the year before, but I was pretty like, no one really knew who I was, <laughs> like new to the sport and Worlds this year. Yeah, I got so nervous i had to go to the toilet like let it out because i just didn't know how to control that then you come back out and you have to like put on set, like a game face and because your competitors are literally right there and you've got to be like yeah i'm fine even though inside i was like i think i was so nervous and yeah you kind of go through that process and it is meant it's like it's nearly draining because you get up every time you put your game face on you race for 30 seconds you come off i like that's like the cycle of it and I thrive off it. I love it. But also at the same time, like you have to train yourself for that because yeah, physically you can be in the best shape possible. But if you get on the start line you're, and you freak out, you don't know what to do. That's where it becomes, you can lose a race doing that. So you need to have both, but it's definitely the, the racing. And because I've never done Olympic games, so it's the pinnacle of track cycling. Like Katie, Katie March and um, my teammate, she's been to two and she's won medals in Rio. Um, and yeah, she's an amazing person to have with me, but you'll never understand that feeling until you get to the Olympics or you get to like worlds even. That's where I start to understand like, oh, wow, like you need to be mentally resilient and you need to push your body to places it's never been before. So yeah, I'm still learning. And I think that's throughout my whole career. Like you're still being a sports person, like you go through waves, you go through ups and downs, but it's how you deal with it. I suppose you could say that there's no sort of substitute for experience either, right? The more you do a thing yeah, exactly. and the more you do it in front of an audience. I mean, that surely must... Do you feel... Is it getting easier each and every time to put on that game face and put out that performance? Yeah, it's definitely getting... I'm more used to it. So we like to have a saying like um, evidence is when you have the evidence, you have more confidence because you've done it and like I have I built up my evidence like Glasgow Worlds I have a bit of evidence Hong Kong recently I have some evidence and that's something you'll carry with you but I guess there's never a feeling of doing something for a first time or like trying to control those emotions because at even races that will come up now I'll start to feel new things or like I'll control my crying in the toilet but then I'll be nervous in a different way so yeah it's definitely it will get easier, but it will still be, yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I'll just, like, I was speaking to Katie and I was like, do these feelings? And she was like, you always still get these, like, but nerves are also exciting. Like, you need the nerves. You need to care. You need to use them. You need to, because if I was just walking up Blase and be like, yeah, it's fine. You're not really, I don't know, the crowd, like, pumps you. You have, yeah, it is like a feeling that you need as an athlete. And I think how you use that is really important. And that's, that's like the trick you almost need to like use the nerves in a good way to get the best out of you do you remember the first time that you sort of stepped out on a bike in front of a really large audience and felt that kind of initial connection and the feeding off a, a crowd do you remember when that sort of first happened for you and when you thought actually I, this is this is an extra one percent for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think so I used to be an endurance rider that was like the longer rides the yeah, the endurance that just kept going. And then I kind of moved to sprinting. And I remember in 2019 in Ghent, I, we, we were doing Euros and it was my first ever European champs. Like I didn't really know what I was doing. And there was like a crowd and I was like, oh, wow, okay. Like they're all, they're watching. Because in a velodrome, it's such a cool venue because you have the velodrome and then the crowd is like higher than you and it goes all the way around the track. And it's like such like, it just lifts you. I remember at the Commonwealth Games as well. So again, it was my first experience of like a crowd. And I was like, oh, like they cheer for you. And they're like, um, and like, they don't know who you are, but they're cheering for the person that's on the screen. And yeah, it's such an amazing feeling because, you know, it does give you that percent. It does make you want to go faster because training every day. Yeah, you push yourself. But when there's a crowd and when there's music and when there's times on the board and when there's a medal up for grabs, like it does give you that little edge that you, you can't experience in training. Um, and I remember even at commies when we had a home crowd, I mean, home, it was, we, I was running for Wales, but England had been knocked out. So we were the next like home nation and they were screaming for us. And I was like, I remember riding down like the back straight on the velodrome and it was just like noise. And they were like, 
go on ever and they were just shouting at us and they were screaming at us so do you think you can develop a winning attitude we we see a lot that once a team or once an individual starts to win they they almost can't stop i mean is there is there something in that is there something in a winning mindset for an athlete that actually you know if you if you do train yourself in a particular way and you you do you know uh, start winning that you know it's it's it becomes easier to win um yeah, I guess you see it more and more like the people who are, I say, at the top or near the top kind of do loop around that area. Like you do see similar faces or like, especially in the men, the men like that's, yeah, we're a little bit different, but you kind of, because you race, like for us at a Nations Cup, like one of the races to qualify for the Olympics, um, when you can race 10 races a day. I like, usually if you make it to the top three, you're doing those races and you're building up the evidence, you're building up the confidence, you're building up the races. And like, the more you do it, the better you'll get. So I guess in a sense, but yeah. Um, yeah. It, yes and no. Um, I feel like at the Olympics last year, um, I know it was COVID, but like someone like Kelsey Mitchell, she, she was racing and she won it. And not that she was a nobody, but like, you need to also treat every competitor like they're going to win it. So yeah, it's a bit of both. It is a bit of both. And you talked earlier about some of the mind games on the start line. What what is that like as well? Is there a lot of is there a lot of each other psyching each other out on the on the start line? It feels like it's very gladiatorial. Is that is that the impression that yeah. you have when you're in that in that seat? Some girls stare at each other like they honestly would just like give each other death stares and. I think at that point, I just want to turn to them and laugh at them because I was like, what are you doing? But for sprinting, especially because our sport's so, so short and so punchy and like we're on the track for like 30 seconds and our race is over. Like we make a decision wrong or right and whether, yeah, it's it's over. So people will play mind games. They'll stare at you. They'll try and put you off. And for me, I've never been like that. Like car, uh, my old coach would be like, you need to stare at them back. And I'm like, but then I'll forget what I'm doing or like I'll play to their game. Um, some people do like some of the races you can see, like the girls will literally just like stare at each other and I'm like, fair enough. But yeah, it is a mind game. You want to throw your opponent off. You want to do little things to annoy them or like aggravate them or yeah, it's kind of, it is interesting to see what people do and like you kind of like suss people out and things. But yeah, I kind of just try and stick to my own game and I'm trying to like focus on me and my like my process and what I want to do. But it, yeah, it can get very like, you might see at the Olympics and like, yeah, probably like people doing the mind games, but I try and just focus on myself. But yeah, it can get quite funny. Do you think that makes you harder to read as a fellow athlete because you don't partake in that? you think that's the, you know, is it difficult for other people to get a read on you? Is that your kind of like your little secret, your little performance secret? Maybe I bring like a, not a calm, because I don't want to, I don't want to be calm, but I think I'm just, I just focus on myself and like, I have my own plan and maybe then I, oh, what is she going to do? Or like, yeah, maybe that does make me harder to read because I just come up to the line, like, I know exactly what I want to deliver out on the track and like, I don't buy into the mind games and like, that's just not for me and maybe that triggers them in a different way and maybe they're like, oh, what is Emma going to do? And yeah, people have their own style of racing and you, you'll start to learn that like, you'll build up a bit of a picture of what people tend to do and things. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's a bit of an edge for me. The other thing is, of course, is that, you know, you talked earlier about the fact that, you know, people didn't necessarily know who you were going into a couple of events, you know, in, in, in recent years. They do know, they do now, they know who you are now. Um, you are, you're a great hope. So, so how, how, how has that, how has that affected you in terms of, you know, just your um, ability to go into racing, not distracted by all the noise around you? Yeah, this year's been huge for that. Um, I've been speaking to my psychologist about that a lot because I struggled. So when I won Worlds, I was like, this is amazing. And like it was, it was such an amazing feeling. Like I didn't expect it. I didn't really know it would happen to me at this this age, this long of my career. So then we had some time off and I raced Champs League and it was my first time wearing the rainbows. And I just, I just didn't know what I was doing. Like everyone was like, you're going to win it. And I didn't. And I was like, this is horrific. Like I, I don't even know how to race my bike anymore. And that's where it kind of turns me. I was like, right, I need to, 
address this. I need to work on this because I will be racing the Rainbow Stripes for the, this year. And one of my proud, proudest moments, I'd say, that's up there with Worlds is winning Euros um, in my Rainbow jersey because that for me was pretty huge. Like I overcome, like what you said, like the expectation for, from everyone, the pressure from myself, from my parents, from everyone around me. And like I overcame all of that and I was really proud of that because, yeah, I had to learn to race as a diff not as a different person but like emma as world champion like i was expected to win you're wearing the stripes everyone's like oh it's the world champion on the track and yeah i wasn't an underdog anymore i wasn't just emma like at worlds and maybe that's how i like not won it but like yeah i kind of just no one really knew who i was whereas i was racing as the world champion and yeah it was hard like i spoke with scott my new coach and he was he was on it like we had so for me I like having a process before a race I like to know exactly what I do because at the end of the day you can only control what you do I can't control what everyone else is going to do and that's really helped me a lot like I just stick to what I know I race to what I know and like we we just took each race that came as the Euros I just marked off each race whether I won or lost we debriefed and that's just how it went and I learned a lot trying to deal with racing in the rainbows trying to deal with the pressure trying to deal with and even in Hong Kong, where we recently raced, and I won all three events, I was kind of like, so I did qualify the best in the 200, and someone came up to me and was like, yeah, we expected that. And I was like, I was, I was just like, that's really sad because I didn't, like, I won a race because, like, the 10 year old Emma loves it. And, like, I race because I love racing my bike and, like, it's exciting. I can dance around the track. So, yeah, I've definitely learned a lot this year, and I'll carry that through to the Olympics, but it's been, it's been such a mental I see it like a mental battle and like yeah it's something like you win but no one ever tells you what happens after that they're like oh you just carry on and I'm like it is a bit different to that and that's the side that no one really sees um, and I definitely worked a lot with my coach my psychologist and yeah we've got a great plan now I want to know what it is <laughs>